This week, I got bored and searched the internet for the weirdest LEGO minifigures I could possibly find. Then, I spent $700 and bought them all. Bruh. I feel dumb now and want to make content out of it, so today, we're going to be looking at several weird, creepy, sus, and just cursed LEGO minifigs. Well, here's a snowman that came in a series of collectible minifigures, but just when you think you're looking at a cute, innocent snowman, you remove his carrot to add to your nutrition shake and find an eyeball looking right into your soul. Turns out there's just a sweaty dude underneath, but he really does catch you off guard. I guess the third eye really does exist. For this next one, we need to film it underwater. This is King Triton, and he's a Disney character from The Little Mermaid. If you see him swimming towards you, swim the other way, because if you remove his face, there's a second one underneath, and it's totally empty. But yeah, I guess LEGO just made a completely separate piece that goes over it. About 20 years ago, LEGO experimented with custom-shaped heads for specific movie characters like Dobby from Harry Potter, this Ewok from Star Wars, and Yoda. But these old minifigs have no eyeballs. I guess LEGO just didn't have a way to print them at the time, but thanks to smart people, we now have advanced technology that can print eyeballs like you see on the new versions of these old minifigs. But if you look at a minifig like the Squidward, it should probably have a custom head, but it doesn't have Bruh. one. But yeah, there's a few throwbacks to weird minifigs I reviewed in the past, like this Nesquik bunny with two eyeballs spaced as far apart as my upload schedule, and the Star Wars character with four arms. Okay, now LEGO makes a bunch of minifigures and suits, like there's a dude dressed as corn, a woman dressed as pepper, or as peas, there's a popcorn boy, there's even a dude dressed up as a LEGO brick. He just built different, I guess. At this point, there's a minifigure dressed up in pretty much anything you can possibly imagine. Like, there's a freaking Titanic. What is this? You can't disrespect Hot Dog Man, though. Hot Dog Man is an absolute alpha. If you take a yellow head, then give it a yellow torso and yellow legs, then you got a minifig with no clothes. Well, in the 2006 Star Wars set came this Princess Leia, and I think it's one of the most revealing minifigs they've made. I low-key feel like I'm looking at the GTA 5 loading screen, or playing one of those old arcade racing games where there's random girls holding flags to telling you when to go. Okay, I guess these aren't really minifigs, but in the early 2000s, LEGO made some collectible action figures that kind of remind me of McDonald's Happy Meal toys. These don't really look anything like LEGO, so I searched for the weirdest one possible, and this dude literally has plain wings for arms. Okay, fly. What's cool though is you can load them with foam bullets that actually shoot. The specific theme of these minifigs is called Galador, and I think LEGO stopped making these a few years afterwards. I then called my boy Sacred to see if he owned any weird minifigures, and he had this shark looking minifig with a creepy mouth underneath, and this other fishy minifig with two giant fangs. Bro, that reminds me of the fish from like Finding Nemo. Okay, now what are some super inaccurate minifigs that look nothing like the original? Well, here's Aldar Beto. He's a Star Wars character, and if you compare him to the real one from the movies, this looks nothing like him. Lego used a droid body, a slope brick, and a straight up yellow minifig head to make him. But Lego made a more accurate version years later. I think this original one though looks nothing like him. I grew up watching a lot of animated Disney movies like Toy Story. Well, Lego actually made Toy Story sets about 10 years ago. Well, if you take a regular Buzz minifig, you can replace his head with one from this Buzz action figure set, and he actually looks really cursed now. I forgot to do this part, so I had to record it in the plane bathroom. Sorry for the audio. And here's an original Ron Weasley minifig from Harry Potter made in 2001. His bowl cut's on a whole new level, and I'm talking about a whole new level down, because that bowl cut ain't looking so fine, G. He eventually got updated, though. I think the new Ron Weasley looks a lot more like him. Now, I went deep into the internet to see if I could find random pieces to invent my own weird Lego minifigs, and this is what I found. I found this official Lego piece, and it's literally a torso with a face on it. But if I'm having a conversation with this guy, I wouldn't even know where to make eye contact contact with, his chest or his head. Also, where does the food go? Here's a minifigure with a giant head. Here's a minifigure with a really tall head. I swear this isn't photoshopped. Here's a minifig with a really tiny face. Here's a very unhappy minifig. Here's a minifig with very large hands. Here's a minifig with a very blocky head. And here's a minifigure whose head is just melting. And these are all custom heads I got from this website called Citizen Brick. I'll link them below. It seems like LEGO hit a really awkward phase designing minifigs around the late 90s and early 2000s because a lot of these minifigs had really weird looking faces. Like this Calvary guy from an old western set. This is that one guy you definitely would want to skip on Omegle. Or these NBA basketball players. Aside from the fact they have cool jerseys and springy legs that help them score threes on the court. Let's see some buckets. 
I've gotta say, some of these boys are definitely not just taking protein shakes pre-game. I also found this Ooga Booga Islander minifig, and its face kind of looks like a clown you'd see in a horror movie. I also found this guy with a huge smile. I mean, just look at it. A smile that wide's gotta make it somewhere in the Guinness Book of World Records. In 1996, LEGO released a set of an imaginary flying car, and it came with these two minifigs, but just by the look of this guy alone, he seems like he's physically incapable of piloting a flying vehicle, and this guy looks like he's terrified by the fact that he's driving it. But yeah, I'm kind of concerned that this guy's cross-eyed. In 2005, LEGO launched Exo Force, which is pretty much a series of anime-themed sets, and these are some of the few minifigs you could get from them. Honestly, I don't find these weird at all, I just find them really unique, because I think these are the only anime-themed minifigs ever made. And if you turn their heads around, they appear very, very angry. This is Sam Sinister, and he's an evil villain from an early 2000s LEGO theme by the name of Adventures. And I definitely see why he's an evil villain, because just by that suit and top hat, I definitely wouldn't want to meet this guy for a Craigslist deal. Here's a random firefighter I found, and he's gotta have the biggest mustache I've ever seen on a minifig. It curls so far upwards that it almost pokes into his eyeballs, and I feel like this amount of facial hair can actually be a fire hazard. Which is ironic, since his job is to prevent fires and not start them. And this is Chancellor Palpatine who's a Star Wars character, but he looks like someone who's been looking at a computer screen playing Minecraft all night. Like, just look at those eyes. And for our final round, let's take a look at genuinely creepy and terrifying minifigs. First one is a Demogorgon from Stranger Things. It has a closed mouth on its head, but you can add this extra piece that goes around it, and it shows the mouth open. This next minifig is named Stingray, and he came in three AquaZone sets from 1998. He has fangs coming out of his suit, red eyes, and when you remove his helmet, he's also got moist, wet hair and a creepy looking mouth. This is the Swamp Creature, and it came in one Monster Fighter set from 2012. There's a bunch of slime and seaweed and just other random swamp crap growing on it, but when you remove its helmet, you'll find two giant snake-type eyeballs looking right at you. I definitely would want this to get out of my swamp. For our third creepiest minifig, we're gonna have to film it underwater again. This is the Lobster Guardian, and he came in one Atlantis set made in 2011. He's got two big pinchers, giant antennas on his head, and worst of all, his mouth is located right on his chest. If I find this lobster in one of those fish tanks at a Chinese restaurant, I'm getting the bill immediately and taking my noodles to go. Number two, the Mad Scientist. This minifigure came in the Scary Laboratory set from 2002, and just when you think his big eyes and creepy smiles enough to keep you under your bed sheets at night, turn his head around to be greeted by someone with red eyes, a thick unibrow, evil smile, and the worst facial hair I've probably Bruh. ever seen. I would not want this guy's barber. And for our final minifig, in my opinion, the most terrifying of all, it's the the mouth of Sauron from Lord of the Rings. When you remove his hat, he has no eyeballs, only a mouth, a wrinkly forehead, and a missing hairline. And that mouth looks like it needs some serious dental maintenance. Like, this guy better have insurance. We hit 1 million subscribers, baby! Let's go! Thank you to everyone who's helped us reach this goal by supporting this channel, but this is only the beginning. I've got so many more bangers for y'all, and to celebrate, I made a podcast with Sacred where we answer some of your biggest questions and help you guys know more about us, because I know these videos are really fast-paced. Also, go watch part 2 on Sacred's channel where he covers other cursed minifigs I didn't even show in this video. Hope y'all enjoyed. Anything you gotta say? Alright, I guess not. See you guys.